Hello, OK, let's have a look at campaign finance regulations in the US and the UK. As is suggested by this front picture, this is an area which could come up as a comparative question, either the compulsory comparative question or the one where you have a choice. So it's worth going over some of the similarities and differences uh, in both countries about dealing with campaign finance, which means, therefore, we can do those questions uh, if they do raise their ugly head in the exam. So I think one area uh, is that in both countries there are concerns about money and where money comes from to fund um, political campaigns. And a common uh, concern of both countries, which is again a potential paragraph for one of those questions, is what influence do donors have or expect to have? So for example, um, Labour in the UK are heavily funded aren't they, by the trade unions, in particular Unison under Jeremy Corbyn with Len McCluskey, who was their general secretary, was Labour jumping to his tune. Same true for the Conservatives and some of their donors. Similar things happen in the United States. You know, if people or candidates receive a lot of money from um, certain uh, donors, does that influence how they vote and how they decide things? So that is one concern which is common in both countries. Secondly, it's the inequality of donations as well, which again may affect election results. Now, if one party receives a lot more funds than another party, um, obviously that means that party can then spend more money at, at elections and therefore has a higher chance of success. In the UK, there's often seen to be a disparity between Labour and the Conservatives, where the Conservatives often outspend Labour. And of course, those two parties have a lot more money um, than, say, the Liberal Democrats or the Scottish National Party. And again, it's a similar concern in the United States as well, um, although in recent times the Democrats have actually outspent the Republican Party. Um, but again, if there's a big inequality of donation sizes and money available, that can lead to problems uh, regarding fair elections. And thirdly, which I suppose is kind of connected to the top one, is transparency. Where does the money come from? Now, again, as a slight difference to that first point we put there about the influence, this is kind of the source of this money. It is the source from um, money from within the country or is it money coming from outside the country? And again, uh, where does that money come from and therefore what influence might politicians have? And both countries have passed laws which bans money coming from outside their country. So all the money they receive for political activity has to be kind of taxable if you like, coming from within um, out of the UK or the United States. And both countries have had scandals regarding campaign finance donations and money. Just to remind you, because you may have forgotten since last year some UK ones, is the Bernie Sanders, um, sorry, the Bernie Ecclestone one even, uh, when he gave a million pounds to the Labour Party in 1997. He ran Formula One. They, they like to have tobacco advertising on Formula One. When Blair later that year passed a law to ban tobacco advertising in sports, Formula One was excluded. He said there was no connection. In 2015, the Conservative MP for Thanet uh, was accused of overspending uh, by UKIP leader Nigel Farage. And in fact, the Conservatives, they were fined for overspending in 15 constituencies. And the Electoral Commission in Britain has also fined Vote Leave campaign for uh, some of their spending as well. So they're just some examples of UK scandals. And again, you can find the more details out of what we did last year um, on this. So very quickly, just to compare legislation, again, I'm not going to go into detail because it's all here basically, but in the UK, in year 2000, the Blair government passed the Political Party Elections and Referendums Act, a bit of a mouthful, uh, which established an electoral commission Parties had to register donations. Uh, in 2014, the Cameron government passed the Transparency of Lobbying, Non-Party Campaigning and Trade Union Administration Act, okay, which again tried to limit pressure group spending um, within the UK. Okay, and the limitations on how much you can spend in a constituency. Okay, which again, the focus of UK legislation is very much on restricting how much you can spend. Whereas in the USA, the the main focus has tended to be on trying to restrict how much you can donate. So there's a bit of a, a different emphasis 
from both parties. In the USA, limits on how much you can donate. In the UK, the focus has been more on how much can be spent. There's a subtle difference between the two approaches both countries have had. Okay, just to compare the limits on spending at spe um, campaign expenditure, uh, in 2015, the, ele the general election, the Electoral Commission rules were that a candidate can spend up to £30,000 on the long campaign and then 8,700 from when the election is actually announced to election day. OK, which basically equates to if a candidate, if a party puts up a candidate in every seat, that's roughly 19.5 million quid can be spent by a political party in a whole general election campaign. Whereas in the USA, there's no real limit on how much you can spend. As I said before, the limit has been on how much you can be donated. Uh, comparing pressure group donations in both countries, uh, in the UK, no group can spend more than £9,750 in a constituency for an election campaign. In the United States, there's no limits on how much pressure groups can uh, spend on election campaigns. In the UK, there's no limit on the amount a pressure group can donate to a political party, uh, but limited in terms of how much that party can then spend. Whereas in the United States, with the invasion of super PACs, means that pressure groups can give unlimited amounts, although not to direct campaigns. So they basically run their own campaigns, which kind of shadow um, the candidates' campaigns. OK, and donations to political parties in the United States are largely unregulated, although foreign donors are banned. Whereas in the UK, uh, you have to be registered if you donate and all that type of stuff. So, how have both countries then sought to deal with campaign finance? Well, they've both passed laws to clarify sources of money. That could be a paragraph. And you just mentioned a USA one and a UK one and explain uh, how they try to clarify where money comes from. They've both uh, rejected state funding of political parties. OK, uh, that debate in Britain about should uh, the state fund parties has kind of died away. You don't really hear of it in the United States. It's kind of like a freedom of action, you know. In fact, in America, there's almost a culture of people donating money to parties, whereas in Britain, you seem to be being a bit strange if you donate to political parties. So there's a subtle difference um, there. But they've both rejected state funding of parties. They've both created a regulator, the FEC in the United States, the Electoral Commission in Britain. How strong are those regulators? You could say they're both relatively weak, although... Again, if you're doing a difference essay, I think I'd probably say the Electoral Commission a bit more teeth to it than the FEC. The FEC is made up of um, two or three party members um, from both parties on the board. The Electoral Commission is more independent. And both countries have passed laws to try and create greater equity between the parties. So they've both tried to deal with... Um, the money and trying to create more an even playing field between the main parties. And they've gone about it in different ways. The USA limiting donation sizes, the U the UK donating how much they can so limiting how much they can spend. Okay, in terms of some differences, the UK has focused on overall spending, USA on donation sizes. The Electoral Commission you might say is stronger than the FEC. And I think as well you could argue the UK judiciary has actually upheld campaign finance legislation. You know, the Conservative Party were forced to pay a fine for overspending in the 20, was it 15 or 17 election. Uh, they did prosecute vote leave as well. Whereas in the United States, the judiciary has actually undermined campaign finance. You know, Citizens United, for example, and various other uh, actions which they have taken. Okay, so potential... So before we go to potential exam questions, uh, on Teams, there's quite a lot of stuff about the UK and party funding. So if you need to brush up, have a look at that. And then potential exam questions are on here for you. You can read them yourselves. Um, I, th I think it's going to be more likely to be a comparative question. OK, as you can see, the examining questions are the non-theory ones. Analyze our theory ones. Uh, so there's some potential ones I've put down there. You may well get a big question on campaign finance. Uh, in the UK, for example, there's some potential ones on the left. In the US paper, there's some potential ones on the right. OK, so they are some potential exam questions which you might get based around this topic area. So with that, I will uh, I will finish.